So, hello again. It's um, the 16th of July. It's about three months since um, this wheat was sown. And I just wanted to show you uh, what it's like now. Um, <clears throat> I've got an electric fence here uh, to stop um, badgers and rabbits principally. And uh, so I can climb over here and show you the wheat. Well, the wheat uh, germinated quite well, uh, or very well actually. The only um, other, the only drawback was that the crows um, ate some of it, um, even though it was covered up, covered over with um, the mulch um, and buried in the furrows. The crows uh, in April are quite hungry and funnily enough the rows that I planted with the cedar, the, the Planet Junior, they got more of the seed there because uh, it sows them in such a confined uh, row that they can actually gauge where the next seed is going to be. Whereas the ones that I hand sowed, uh, they, um, the seed was more dispersed within the furrow and so the crows had to sort of um, dig around a bit before they found the next one. But anyway, most of it's come up. Uh, I think the germination rate was very good because it was it germinated in that um, wet soil. And you can see here, um, it's grown up to about four, four and a half foot, f five foot high in some cases, which is as high as I've ever had it actually. And I think that's something to do with the fertility of the um, uh, soil. Um, so we're hoping for a very good crop at the moment, um, a lot of things can go wrong, but um, the weather's been good, we had some rain in June um, which, which really helped, and since then it's been very warm, so it's ideal growing conditions. Um, I'm standing here in quite a wide gap, um, they're not supposed to be this wide, but uh, for some reason there's a gap here. <clears throat> and I'd just like to show you some of the um, wildlife and wild plants. Um, as you can see, we're, um, there's a lot of what would be what would be called weeds here in between the rows, but it doesn't worry me very much. Um, I mean, I've just picked a few here, there's, uh, which are flowering. There's corn chamomile there, that white one. Um, Speedwell. The blue one there, and some scarlet pimpernel, I think it is, the red one, and then we've got got a sow thistle here. We've got uh, lots of different kinds of grasses. We've got obviously the old favourites, nettles, docks, thistles. Um, yeah, but a whole variety of uh, wild plants, and I don't know if you can hear above me talking, but there's grasshoppers crickets, um, an insect life here. And then if we have a look at the soil, uh, it's, I'll just dig around here. So there's, there's a bit of the um, mulch that I made with a rotavator. So that's the, that's the dead um, grass that was here before, the pasture grass, which is now rotting and providing a bit more fertility. And um, you can see I can dig down in this soil because it's been rotivated. Um, and it's nice and friable and not not completely dried out, although it is very dry at the moment. Um, but it's nice for growing in. But of course, the roots of these wheat plants they they'll be in the um, they'll be in the undisturbed soil um, deeper down, which has more moisture. So again, um, not ploughing is a good idea in terms of um, giving these plants more access to uh, water. Okay. Um, this is one of the heads of the uh, April wheat. Uh, you can see it's got beards on, which um, um, is a trait of this particular variety of spring wheat. I'm just going to count the number of uh, rows on it. 
So, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ten or eleven rows there. Um, and it's still very green at the moment, but uh, obviously it's not ripe. But um, with a bit of luck, a bit of warmth, um, that should provide quite a good yield. Uh, just for comparison, um, I want to show you this neighbouring field of um, wheat, which is grown conventionally. Uh, we're, we're only about half a mile away. Um, I'll just show you the, uh, this is a large field of uh, modern variety wheat. Um, <clears throat> it was planted um, as winter wheat, which is, so it's planted about six months before our wheat. Our wheat is spring wheat. Um, so that's why it's uh, riper than um, our wheat. But um, come and have a look at uh, what, what's going on in more detail over here. One thing to notice is that uh, this is a lot shorter than our wheat. It's um, modern variety wheat. Uh, farmers don't want very much straw. They, uh, um, they don't want to be dealing with large quantities of straw. So uh, this is what, maximum two foot high, 18 inches high or something like that. Um, Second thing is, of course, it uh, hasn't got beards, so it's a different variety of wheat. But the, probably the, the major thing is lack of anything else apart from wheat. Um, there's just nothing here. There's no weeds, there's no wildlife. Um, this is a monoculture. Yeah, the reason the reason being that um, uh, this is a uh, this is grown with chemicals. Um, they've used selective herbicides to kill off any broadleaf weed species. Uh, weed species. Um, they will have used um, pesticides as well uh, against insects. Um, the wheat will have been coated with. Um, wheat seed will have been coated with um, pesticides and fungicides. Yeah, fungicides as well. And of course, um, uh, artificial fertilizer. Um, another thing to notice is that the, um, the yield here is going to be a lot bigger than, um, than ours. Um, it's probably, on past experience, it's probably about three times as the yield per um, acre compared to ours. Um, having said that, I know that other organic farmers can get a lot a lot better yield than that. Um, but I haven't grown really for yield. Uh, let's count the number of rows. Uh, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, not quite so many rows as mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh well, that one's got ten. <clears throat> but let, have a look. Have a look here. Absolutely nothing else growing here whatsoever. And look at the soil. It's like a concrete floor. This. Uh, you couldn't dig into that if you tried. Admittedly, this is where the tractor's gone. So it's um. It's been compacted, but even here, uh, the soil is really hard baked. Um, okay, that's partly because it's it's clay soil here, and um, our soil is more sandy. But uh, this has been ploughed, of course, um, so and then compacted. But I'm sure there won't be that much life in this soil compared to ours. And there certainly isn't as much life above the ground, is it? So, yeah, the, I've, I've heard that uh, on average, this kind of crop 
receive 16 different kinds of chemical treatment including the artificial fertilizer and um, sometimes uh, farmers will spray it just before they harvest it they'll spray it with glyphosate in order to make sure that there's no green left on it uh, when they harvest and that is the that is as dangerous as anything I think because the glyphosate then gets into the wheat that we eat and personally I don't want to eat those 16 different chemicals I just want you to sort of get an idea of the atmosphere here and the sounds compared to our place it really is a bit of a lifeless feel this apart from the wheat I can hear a few birds, a few crows I can't see any insects I can't see any wildflowers even the wind sounds a bit 